let's welcome in the management at uh, SBI. Uh, uh, Ms. Anshula, CFO at SBI, is now joining us on a phone line. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you know, we'll just go to your deposit cut. But before that, you know, the finance minister just uh, explained that how it is important uh, to grow into rural areas via the digital uh, medium. Do you think it's already happening after November 8th? Is there a change that you're seeing into the way rural customers are now reacting to new digital launches? Oh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, surprisingly well, really. And, you know, all through the demonetization, we were tracking the uptake on mobile banking and other uh, digital means of, uh, you know, usage is very, very good. Uh, very uh, positive, actually, in the rural areas. And uh, since, you know, 67% of our branches are in the rural and semi-urban areas, it gives us a very good platform to really push for this uh, with our rural customers. Right. You know, just talking about the untapped area over there, uh, if, uh, in, uh, if you know a lot of villages, uh, one can cope up with these changes very fast. Uh, it could lead to a lot of fee income growth, a lot of opportunities to go ahead and sell the cross products that you have if, if, if you know, this, these changes do happen. Uh, yes, see, there are two things. One, of course, is the biggest one for us is that the cost of uh, transactions comes down significantly for the bank as we move towards the digital. You know, ultimately, even if uh, customers draw cash from the ATM, they don't go to the branches, still there is a cost for the bank in terms of loading and unloading the cash and man managing all that cash. So as customers move to debit card usage and mobile banking usage or internet banking, uh, it reduces the cost of transactions for the bank. That is one. The other is that, uh, of course, like you said, uh, that there will be some uptick in the fee income also. Right. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, rates in the system, now can you talk about the deposit rates that you've cut? Any particular reason why these deposit rate cuts have happened? You see, actually, if you just see when we really reduced our MCLR to 8%, uh, it was preceded by that huge inflow of current account and saving bank deposits during demonetization. That pulled down our cost of deposit significantly. As you know, you know, what goes into the MCLR primarily is the cost of deposits, you know, to building up the MCLR, which is the lending rate. So, you know, post-demonetization, gradually some of these deposits have started to go out of the system. And roughly for us, about 40% of the deposits have gone out from the bank. We still have 60%. So that is one thing. The other is, of course, you know, with this merger from 1st April of our associate banks, there has been a slight uptick in our cost of deposits because their cost of deposits was higher than ours. And uh, we were not very keen to increase the MCLR at this point. As cost of deposit goes up, it uh, you know has an upward pressure on the MCLR as well. So to retain MCLR for our borrower customers where it is, uh, not to have to increase it, we have tweak the rates in certain longer end uh, uh, rates, deposit uh, buckets. Uh, that is more than 456 days upwards. We have taken down by 50 basis points and three to five years and beyond we have taken by 25 basis points. But all the other rates, the most popular bucket of 6.90%, one year to 455 days, it stays the same. Also for the senior citizens, we continue to give that 50 basis point premium that we were giving earlier. Right. Ma'am, could you also just tell us that, uh, you know, do you expect the savings rate uh, to come down? I'm talking about the savings account. Do you expect any big bank uh, to go ahead and cut rates on the savings uh, side? Because, you know, the cost of uh, fixed income is now coming closer uh, to the savings bank rate. You know, you know, these are things which each individual bank will decide, uh, given a lot of things, you know. There are a lot of things that go into decisions for the changing deposit rates. One, of course, is, you know, where the general rates in the economy are. Uh, the You know, what RBI stance is towards liquidity, are they hawkish, are we expecting further rate cuts from RBI? All of those things go into the making of the deposit rates, you know, for the bank. So we will see how it goes. And, uh, uh, you know, there are always conflicting forces <laughs> for that. The RRCO will decide on this. And uh, so will, I think, any other bank. Right. Uh, Ma'am, let's talk about the other side of the balance sheet. Uh, credit growth data, credit deposit data. Uh, have you seen that picking up? Is credit demand in the system going up now? You know, the the, the uh, system growth remains and so does ours remains as a, at a single digit level. Typically, in any case, you know, April may are uh, you know slightly lean months for credit growth in India. Um, so the you know retail deposit continue to grow well. What we have started to see is a little uptick in the agri and the SME space. 
so hopefully uh, that should pick up and uh, you know beyond the first quarter it should pick up better typically you know first quarter if you see year after year if you just see the trend first quarter growth in loans is always a little slow Right, uh, ma'am. In terms of credit pickup, uh, do you think right now the loan demand that is there in the system, especially in the last uh, you know month or so, uh, is probably one of the worst demand that you have seen? So things can only improve from here on. No, I wouldn't like to put it like that because, in fact, we have seen very strong uh, growth in credit on the retail side. We have seen some improvement in the agri space also. Uh, but like I said, you know, it is there is a seasonality to uh, Indian credit growth. So worst ever, no, I wouldn't put it like that at all. Uh, it is a seasonal dip. Whatever happens, in fact, counterintuitively, the retail demand has really picked up from March onwards. Right. Do you expect the retail demand to be strong? It's been strong for last three or four years. Do you expect that to drive the growth rates higher? Yes, I, I would imagine so. And you know, it is there. If you see the Maruti numbers that have come out recently. It's it's there for everybody to see. You know, the consumer demand, consumption demand has not uh, really fallen off. You know, there was a small setback post demonetization, but it is, I think, back with a bang. And I think this uh, rera that has come through from first May, plus the fact that MCLR is low and you know real estate prices are uh, stable, I think will continue to uh, you know rejuvenate the home loan demand as well. Particularly, you know, with this affordable housing uh, projects being approved now. Under the Prime Minister uh, Avas Yojana scheme, so I don't expect uh, uh, retail demand uh, to be subdued this year. We expect it to be pretty strong. Right, ma'am. In terms of corporate demand or corporate loan growth demand, you think the problem is capacity utilization? So once you see a sign in pickup of capacity utilization, working capital needs, fresh capex needs would automatically come. So you know, it is a it, it is a mix of uh, many factors. As we all know, the economy, you know, the demand in general has been slow. One is, of course, capacity, capacity utilization. The fact that no new projects are coming up, or very few are. But again, you know, to go back to this uh, home home uh, residential demand piece, I think this will be a key driver in rejuvenating corporate credit demand as well. Because you know, even the numbers that we've seen yesterday, if you see. Steel has, you know, steel has grown pretty well. Cement is capacity utilization has started to improve, and with this uh, affordable housing and smart cities coming up very well, very nicely, I think this will have a strong backward linkages for cement, uh, uh, steel, aluminium, all of this, uh, all, also the auto loans. And in fact, the uh, cement uh, sector itself is projecting that at least nine percent of the demand may come from the affordable housing piece or the total housing piece uh, from real estate by 2020. So I think this may kickstart some, uh, uh, you know, key sector demand going forward this year. In any case, in some cases we have started to see some green shoots. You know, uh, some in some sectors we are seeing some projects coming in. Very slow though. but uh, yes we have started to come in what would be uh, ma'am your view as far as npa resolution is concerned uh, do you think that uh, there is a you know there is some 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 help from the government which may come in on resolution of npa for the sector as a whole i cannot comment on that you know that you'll have to ask the government uh, i cannot comment on that but we are doing our utmost to you know see how how much we can push forward the uh, resolutions as soon as as early as can happen within the current guidelines uh, but you know whether government is coming out with something we have to ask them right uh, no i was not saying that they have to come out with something but i'm saying that do you expect any help to come in because a lot has been spoken about npas uh, and you know a big resolution uh, solution likely to come in uh, from from the government or finance ministry you yourself are saying you know that a uh, lot of comments and commentary has come on that i don't think i need to add my bit to that really Right. Can you just tell us the situation on the ground for NPS? Are you seeing an improvement? Not really. You know, I think this call was for the rates. I don't think we should uh, go into the NPS situation yet. Right, ma'am. Thank you so much for taking our time for us. Always good. to get a perspective from you there was a management at SPI talking about uh, what is happening in the digital initiative what's happening as far as deposit rate cuts which has happened and then also followed by uh, you know the credit demand that is there in the system